Hi guys, Will Terry here, and this video is going to be called Coloring and Crosshatching. And um, one of the reasons why I want to make this video is, well, there's a few reasons, but one of them is that uh, I've been getting a lot of questions from Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and here on YouTube. Um, actually, a lot of requests to do another, like, rendering video. And uh, so I, I just decided to do one um, to basically to answer questions like, you know, how are you cross hatching that? Is that a cross hatching brush? Is that, a, is it a texture brush that's giving you the cross hatch look? How are you actually doing it? Um, and then also, um, it's self-serving. I have a Kickstarter going on right now. Most of you are probably getting to this video after the Kickstarter's over, which is cool. You can go check it out anyway. Um, if you go on Kickstarter, um, you just search little, that's the name of the project, or you can click in the link below in the description. Um, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm obviously, I'm trying to direct traffic there as well. Um, but in the process, I can actually make a video and, and show how I'm doing this. So in the book, I've got, I've got illustrations that are basically just black and white, but then when they, when it makes sense to put color on them, I'm just doing an accent color of red. So again, if you, if you look on the Kickstarter or if you've been following me on Instagram, I've also got a link for, for my Instagram on here. Um, you can see the body of work that I've been doing. And so I'm just going to go through some of these before I get started on. I'm actually going to be doing Hellboy on this one. So, um, but you can see how I'm adding the color and how the color is actually kind of working for the character. I mean, Darth Maul just doesn't work without red, right? Um, same with Deadpool. Um, it just doesn't, it's just not the same without red. A lot of the characters do work without red and, 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 and so I'm not, I don't want to use red where I don't need it, you know. So for this one, if you haven't guessed who this is, um, this is Dorothy from Wizard of Oz. And, uh, you know, uh, and if you haven't guessed who this is, um, this one is, pause the video if you want to guess. If you don't want me to tell you, it's Joker. Um, and, you know, so again, I'm using red, I'm trying to use red in a limited way. I'm not using any other colors. Um, you know, Spider-Man makes sense as well. I actually did another one, but I guess I didn't get it in this folder. Um, but anyway, so that's the project. And, uh, so here's Hellboy right here and he's actually not finished. I thought what I would do is actually, um, do some, some more cross hatching on this to actually just show you what I'm doing. Cause I, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people, and maybe I'll tell you a story as I'm, as I'm working on this too. A lot of people have thought, let's see, I got my, I got all my settings changed for, from something else. But um, a lot of people thought that this was traditional, that I was working in traditional pencils. When I was out at CTN, I can't remember if I've told this story before on the, on the, on the YouTube channel, but um, basically, I'm just going to start working as I'm, as I'm going along here. And this is going to be boring, but I'll, I'll talk in and work at the same time. Um, I was out at CTN and this guy comes to the table, two guys come to the table and they were Asian. And one guy was bent over looking at my Star Wars poster, which had these little characters on there. And um, anyway, he, his, he, I don't think he spoke English. And his interpreter asked, he wants to know, he said something to him. And he said, um, he wants to know if they're, if they're pencil. And I said, no, they're digital. And I didn't, I didn't recognize this guy at all. Um, but he says, he looked at me and he goes, oh, okay, cool. And, uh, and I was like, oh, okay, I, I wonder if that means that's good or bad and probably bad because most people don't really give digital a whole lot of respect these days. And so, you know, I mean, and for obvious reasons, you know, I mean, like it's, it's definitely, um, it's a, definitely a lot harder to, to work um, traditional on something like this because obviously you can smear it. You can't make edits and alterations easy, as easy. You can't zoom in and do details and stuff like that. So just a lot of people just don't really give it a whole lot of uh, clout. So he walks away. And then some other guy comes running up to me and he goes, do you know who that was? And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't know who it was. And uh, he goes, that was Kim Jong-ji. Now that's the guy who you got to look him up if you don't know who I'm talking about. But that's the guy that draws in marker 
and he does these huge murals with no pencil and everything's in perspective all this detail work and he just it's just flowing right out of him and uh that guy's amazing and i i knew who he was by name but on most of his youtube videos and vimeo vi videos you know you see the back of his head as he's drawing and i never really paid much attention to what he looked like because i'm a i'm a visual person i usually um i can usually tell what someone looks like or i never forget a face it's i'm just going to tell you right now it's it's hard for me to talk and draw at the same time but i'm going to do my best because I, I i thought about doing this in voiceover but i thought it just feels more like a hangout and you know you guys i know a lot of people draw while they're watching my videos and stuff and so if you want to draw along um you know that, that's great and you can look up every now and then um but uh, anyway, so I thought that was pretty cool that Kim Jung Ji was at least interested in my work for a few seconds while he thought that it was traditional. And then when he realized it wasn't, he didn't care about me anymore. But it was cool because just for a few seconds I was special, even though I didn't know it. Um, okay, so what am I doing here? Um, you know, I'm not, I know I'm going to get questions about my brush and. I'm just going to tell you right now, and you guys know that follow my channel, I have an online school. It's called SVS Learn, svslearn.com. It's also linked below. And I have complete tu tutorials on how to do this style that looks identical on the iPad Pro and in Photoshop like this. I share all my settings and I go into depth more on how I'm doing it. This video is more just kind of a process, just kind of showing you what I'm doing. These cross-hatching strokes are like this. This is what I'm doing right here. I'm just drawing. So there is no special secret brush or anything. This is what I'm doing right here. And it's tedious and it's time consuming and I build up the the textures um you know like you would a painting really. Uh and in in a you know painting you're painting with a stroke. And so, you know, with a paint stroke you might make you know one stroke like that and you might put these different strokes together and together those marks make a painting. Well, I'm just doing that on a different scale, but each stroke is basically a set of hatches like this. That's a stroke, and then that's another stroke, and then that's another stroke. And I just alter, excuse me, the direction that I'm going in. And sometimes I'll, I'll rotate my screen so that I can get a better attack angle because my, you know, your, your wrist only works really well one way. And so if you start trying to contort your hand, you can't do it as well, but that's what I'm doing. I'm constantly moving around, and I'm just building up. So when you see me doing that, and I will, what I'll do is I'll switch out, and if I get into a, a dark area where I want to put some light, I'll just hatch some light over top of it. Right? That's something you can't do with a pencil, but you can do it digitally. I mean, actually, you can. You can get a light pencil and do that, but you can't do that with graphite very well. Um, you can do it on toned paper, however. Um, so for what it's worth there's that um, so I'm just gonna be working on this and I'm gonna I'm gonna get the the cross hatching part done and then I'm gonna add the color to it right so that's basically what I'm doing right now and if you heard that crash somebody just came in the front door and slammed it because no one none of my none of my boys come home or come in the house until I start making a video that's that's the rule of of me making videos is it it's like it draws them home or else it draws like one time I had a, like a guy revving his motorcycle outside so it just seems like or ambulance I used to get those a lot ambulances when we lived across town and we lived on a busier road but anyway what I got here is Hellboy you know and I I've worked out the the sketch and what you're not seeing is you, you haven't seen all the struggles and the 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 drawing part of this you know I'm into the fun mode the 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 hatching mode and he's got Abe Sapien here um, I have to give a shout out to Jake Parker because he gave me the idea for this one I was really stuck and he came through and, and gave me the idea and so thank you Jake for that I always I'm big on gratitude and I always feel like you really need to to let people know uh, when you feel grateful for something that they've done for you and um, so I really feel grateful that he's done that for me so I'm just going along 
and I'm trying to figure out where the shadows are going to be and I'm just going to be reinforcing things you know so under here under his chin we're going to have darker so I'm just going to kind of go along there and kind of put that in there I could zoom in more um, another question that I'll as I'm as I like this is like a stream of consciousness so as I get an idea I'll just kind of attack it but another thing that I know people will ask is what size do you work I get that question a lot so I'm going to show you um, I, I print I make prints out of these for um, conventions and I don't like that tangent how that lines up right there right with his finger maybe his maybe his thumb can come up higher or something you know so I'll make little alterations as I go along um, but let me show you before I forget you know we can see what I've done already that's basically this the stuff that I've been doing since it started here um, let's just look and see the size here so I know the size basically because I've got 3000 by 4000 and that's um, three basically that's you know that uh, with the the resolution um, with the pixels you're gonna get um, you know um, 300 pixels per inch so that's you know 300 goes into 3010 times and then 300 goes into 4012 times and so that's a 10 by 12 basically oops there we go so I can zoom in quite a bit more and it's starting to pixelate I can see it there you can probably see it there but you know there's a lot of information in this so that I can print up an 11 by 14 or I can because of the size of this you know it'll actually still fit on an 11 by 14 or an 8 by 10 um, so yeah but the the thing is I really want to make sure that I get all of these um, shadow areas and just everything really kind of figured out and really um, worked out before I start adding color you know because actually I'm doing a poster for part for one of the stretch goals of my Kickstarter and the poster is all black and white so it has to be finished in black and white first and this is you know this is kind of a style that I I kind of came up with as an answer to you know and a lot of people have asked me this too so I guess now is a good time to kind of answer this um, but I I if you look at my portfolio I've got a link to that below too I think basically my whole life is linked below um, but you know if you if you know what I've been doing it's really been you know a lot of uh, color work and you know everything that I was ever solving in the past was done with color you know and I, I basically relied on color I still love doing colorful stuff and as soon as I'm done with this project I'm going right back to color um, because I love it so much and it, I feel like it comes fairly naturally but I wanted to explore and really push myself to learn something new and this part of this project was really a challenge to break away and do something that I've never done before which is to just solve problem after problem in black and white and then the idea came well some of the characters actually really begged for that red color and so I broke down and, and did a few and really liked it didn't know if I was going to be able to come up with a, a way to colorize them or to, to add color to where I would still have the cross hatching texture underneath um, and where it would, would, would really work and fit in um, and so that was neat to try to solve that but I needed the, the colored ones to match so that when I went to a convention um, they wouldn't look they, they would look like they were still part of the family you know they would so people could mix and match some black and white 8 by 10s and then maybe an 11 by 14 color and they would they would still look like they belong together whereas you know my natural inclination of using color is a totally different style and just really wouldn't have worked at all uh, would have really felt out of place and so um, I just I decided not to to do that that I really needed to explore and come up with something new I think by going through a process like that you that's when you really learn a lot I think artists you know we're like anybody else we tend to fall into a rut we tend to get into a situation where we rely on 
what feels comfortable and we don't really push ourselves to ask questions on you know like how how will I solve this it's one of the reasons why I really admire artists um, who will tackle a new problem and really force themselves to learn new things one such artist that I would recommend looking up who does that on every children's book that he does is Eric Roman um, one of the things that that I I think is really cool about the way that he works is um, he will just ask himself when he gets a new manuscript to work on he'll just say okay what what do I see stylistically for this book like what would do right by the book not how am I going to impose my style on this book but rather you know what what does the book need and uh, I think that'd be a very scary way to work because you know the obvious fear that comes in is what if I can't come up with something that I really like you know um, and I've never worked that way except on this project I guess I, I could say that I did so yeah um, anyway what else should I talk about I'm trying to anticipate what questions will be asked of me on this project and I think I've answered some of them I talked about the tutorials that go over all this that go all over all the settings um, I think that's important um, yeah but I think you're you're seeing if you're if you're gonna stick with this video and either draw along and just kinda of see how long it takes and imagine how long it it took before I got to this point before I started recording this video um, you know I, I, I from the questions that I've gotten you know like is there a brush how do you do that cross hatching technique I wanna do that the sad reality and this is true for so many different styles right is that there is no shortcut you know at, which is actually a really good thing because that's that's that gives you preservation right for if you come up with a style that you really like and it's really hard to do then that means that not too many people are going to be able to just copy exactly what you're doing and so that preserves your ability to to do that thing you know not like this is not like cross hatching is anything revolutionary um, I'm just too stubborn to to quit you know and so I'm just gonna keep doing this whereas a lot of people I think would go that's way too tedious for me I need to bang something out quicker which I totally get you know um, and I, I, I think that there's there are lots of different ways to work and there's lots of different styles of art that are that are really cool and that, that you know really speak to people and I don't think you can uh, you know say well one's better than another it's just it just comes down to preference you know I think some people really like this this um, really t I would call this a really tight cross hatching style almost in some ways over rendered um, you know it's and again it's almost like cross hatch painting because I just I just keep going to the point where you know you zoom in and look at this area and you're like how did you get that texture every single one of those lines was drawn you know and I think I think if some people hear that they're gonna go okay well that's not for me um, and I, I totally get that um, but I think that one of the reasons why I fell into doing the cross hatching this way which I did do one that was a lot looser style and if you go back on my videos um, and I if I remember to I'll link it below in the in the in the description uh, but it was it was a uh, cross hatching on tone paper and it's if you look at the thumbnails in my on my channel it's of a uh, a guy a, a frog carrying a fish so look for that one but in that one you know the the cross hatching style was a lot looser um, I didn't tighten up as much I think over time I got a little little tighter than I wanted to on these but I also really wanted to kind of craft them so that each one was was really a little a cool little artifact that that people could have and put on their wall and so I don't know. I just kind of fell into this naturally, I guess, into this this way of working. So anyway, I think what I'll do is I'll finish this up because this is kind of tedious. 
but I'm just gonna let it I'm just gonna speed it up and play it out and maybe I'll throw some music over top of it and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I color it and I'll do that in real time so cue the music Okay, so we're back here, and um, so this is what it looked like when I started, and this this part of the video, I mean this YouTube video, and then I did this layer, kind of added some value and some highlights, and then worked on this one, and you can see where we are now. So pretty much a finished um, drawing. Now I will preserve these layers. Um, I'll probably just merge these two together because they're basically the same thing. So that's all the different, the, all the changes right there that I made just now. And I'll go ahead and preserve that because again, I, I might want to go and work on the black and white underneath the color um, if I see something. So I'll just keep that. So I'm going to go ahead and get a new layer. We're going to go ahead and color this now. And uh, before I forget, I wanted to mention too that. Um, there have been a bunch of people from YouTube from watching my other videos that did back my Kickstarter and I just want to make sure I say thank you to you guys it really means a lot and um, you know this is it's a scary thing to launch uh, a project and to wonder if people are really gonna want it and find value in it and I just I feel really lucky that and fortunate that it's a success and that the book is gonna be made and and all that good stuff okay so here we go um, so the first layer is going to be a multiply layer and I'm just going to throw color in there and I'm just going to get kind of this a, a darker red something down in this this zone right here um, and I'm just going to start to lay that in now this is not and, and the, my disclaimer here is that this is not an exact process and uh, so I might make some mistakes and I might back off a little bit but this is basically what I've come up with is just to start um well let me get take off these uh controls here i want to take off uh, actually i'll keep transfer on and get rid of shape dynamics so now i've just got uh, a brush with with transfer the pen pressure on 
and I'm just going to start to lay this color in and I can already see that I've got it too too much opacity so I'm going to turn that down to about a 30 percent and just start to kind of airbrush in um, the color right and uh, I know I'm getting overspray I'm going to end up erasing some of that I know that some people are going to probably say you know you could mask that off one of the reasons why I don't I, I sometimes I do use masks a lot of times why I don't is because um, the amount of controlling that hard edge line it usually will end up taking me extra time to fix it anyway and so sometimes I'll just overspray like this and just work that color in there and go and fix the edges and and I'm fine with that so again this is not an exact process so in some areas I might have too much color in some areas I might not have enough um, so I, I will keep this multiply layer as well because I might have to go back and, uh, and and modify it a little bit I don't I typically don't like a lot of layers um, but I do like to be able to adjust them if, if they're too dark I want to be able to go back in on them and lighten them up underneath and there's a lot of at the end of one of these processes a, a lot of what I'm doing is is checking the layer opacities and and lightning like I said lightening and darkening those um, to finally get it because it seems like I normally the norm the way I normally paint I just get too much pigment out there and so this is kind of a way to keeping those different layers separate is a way to control that so then we got his hand over here and then we're gonna have I think my son's gonna come in here and make noise or he's gonna stay outside my office I'm just kinda of preparing because I forgot to tell people that I was making a video today <laughs> So I get what I deserve, right? Uh, I got a little heavy on that right there. I just want to make sure that I get these darker areas, get some coverage on those. I'm just making my brush bigger and smaller with the. Um, the bracket keys so if you see my brush getting bigger and smaller I'm just holding down the, the brackets next to the letter P so a hot key that's really really comes in handy when you're, when you're working and you want to enlarge your brush um, another hot key is to hold shift and then those brackets and then you can you can get the hardness right oops so I'm just shift bracketing and I can change the hardness on the fly. Um, okay, so I think I've got that pretty well laid in there like that. Let's see. Get some more color down here on his legs. Now, I think I'm going to make his, his toes red too. I think most versions of Hellboy have those have his hooves or toes red as well so I think I'll do that I think that'll look better okay so then the next thing I'm just making sure I go over that I'm just gonna erase it off his eye and the only reason I'm gonna do this now is just so I can keep track of what it's supposed to be looking like I'm not really cleaning up edges yet but I just want to be able to make sure that my eye isn't tricked value wise by what's going on so see I can still adjust the value right here um, the opacity right here right I can make it darker and lighter right there and that's what I was talking about so underneath I can change that um, okay so I'll probably again I usually get it too dark so I'm gonna to go to 94 percent now I'm gonna get another layer and then this layer I'm actually gonna add 
a brighter red. I don't want to go all the way bright yet, and the reason for that is I want to be able to brighten it with a dodge layer later on. So and at this point, I am going to go ahead and let's see. I'm going to turn on my have transfer checked on right there, um, and then I'm going to just start to hit this with some color. And for some reason, it's not painting. Oh, that's because I'm on the eraser. There we go. Give myself a little more opacity. And it's it's interesting because I, I just don't want to get too much color, but I don't want to have too little color in there. And I'm I feel like I just got too hot right away. And again, I'm not that good with this with this style. So I think I'm just gonna start over on this layer and hit that again but I'm going to go back down to 30% on the opacity and just try to it's easy to overcook the the color zones so I'm just going to hit this like this I'm going to hit some color in here and again if you're used to painting and putting color into things you can kind of get a sense of where there's more color in a face or you know in a, in a in any object really where the the highlights and the half tones are I'm really trying to kind of follow that now that really covered over those shadows so I don't want to do that um, I'm going to zoom in here and hit this his knuckle thingies like that and avoid those shadows there There really won't be a whole lot of light down here, so kind of leave that alone right there a little bit. Okay, so now we got that going on, which is looking like that. Let's see, hit, hit his, his hands a little bit here. And now, I think what I'm going to do is go through, go back on this multiply layer and start erasing. I'm just going to harden up my brush a little bit and just come in here. And I don't mind if there's a tiny bit of overspray. I don't like it when I'm, I'm kind of big on not having your art look perfect. I like it to have that kind of traditional feel and it, when you're working traditionally things are rarely ever perfect and again that goes back to why I, I'm not really a big mask person and why I take the extra time to actually um, fix things more like you would in a traditional way I used to actually when I was working in acrylics <clears throat> when I you know five or six years ago um, that's and that's the medium that I started in. I used to paint white. If I was doing a uh, a spot illustration, I would I would overpaint with my underpainting on the white paper, and then I would paint white back and actually create the edge of the vignetted area, like I'm doing here. And what that would do is, again, it would give me a softer edge. You know, I could have used a, a liquid frisket or a mask of some sort, um, but I chose not to do that because I, I like the feeling of a softer edge that's made up of multiple layers of paint or ink or marker or whatever you're working in. So I'm just going to clean this up. Now there's still a lot to do and I've covered over a lot of the highlight areas and um, there might be a little bit of fixing that I might do after this video is over too because I don't want to I don't want to spend too much time uh, boring you with the cleanup process but um, definitely want to give an idea of it Uh, 
And if you don't clean up, it's your painting's going to look like a mess. So you got to go through that process. But now notice I didn't I didn't have my opacity on my on my eraser at 100% either. I had it at 80% and 60% some of the time. Um, okay, so got my little guy here, and uh, now I think the next step is to actually go back in and do some hatching. Um, on top of this layer right here and really kind of reinforce some of the highlight areas so this might be a part where I speed up again I think I will um, I'll just I'll kind of get going on it and show you what I'm doing and then I think I'll speed up because again I think it's going to be boring but I'm going to go back and and just basically yeah, make sure I'm on the right layer there and kind of hit the highlights again you know and this is kind of a redundant process you know um, it takes away a lot of the work that I had already done but I, th I like the results that I get with this so I'm just gonna keep going with that there I'm not gonna I, I don't have to add the pure intensity of the highlights and I'll show you why when I get to the color dodge um, method, it will really pop these these highlights out, and you'll see. But I do need to get them in there to a to a point where they the 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 dodge tool will take effect. If I don't do that, it, it won't it won't work. So. Okay, so you kind of know what I'm doing here. And I'm just going to speed up the video and then uh, I'll come back and wrap it up. Okay, so um, okay, so let's let's just proceed to the finish on this. And again, I might end up tweaking it a little bit. So if you see the final later on, it might look a little bit different. And I can already see like the things I struggle with are areas like this. I think I'll cover this over a little bit more. See, the color dodge is going to bring that out. And if you if you hit your highlights too hot before you dodge, then it's going to blow out those areas into white and you don't want that so that's why I'm kind of last minute going over this stuff here you need to basically color dodge is an amplification for what's already there is what's happening and uh, so alright so here we go oh tail I forgot the tail tail supposed to be red so I need to go back to my multiply layer here and add some of that red color into the tail. I can do this really fast. And then move up 
here. Just kind of hit it like that. Okay. All right, so let's proceed now and we'll get a new layer. So what layers do we have? We have this, I have this multiply layer and then a normal layer of just color. And then I got the cross hatching layer on there of more of lighter values and colors. And the next one is gonna be um, I'm going to go ahead and fill this um, with black, right? And then I'm going to turn down the opacity. And then I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just a real quick getting rid of all of this out here. And that way if I accidentally dodge out here, I'm not going to have any pigment out there at all. Because it'll only dodge where I've got this black layer. Okay. So then I'll turn the opacity back up. And then I'm just going to go ahead and turn it to color dodge. And it'll, it'll look like it disappeared, but you can see it's still there. Right. And then this is, again, this is just to enhance the colors. And since I want to go warmer, I'm going to pick a pure orange just this totally saturated orange right there and then uh, and then I'll take out my my brush settings to back to zero so I'm just on the airbrush and I'm going to turn down my opacity and flow down to about 20 percent on each one and then I'm just going to selectively um, start to enhance what's already there right and again I can the nice thing is I can turn down this this color dodge layer as well so I can I don't have to keep the the saturation level that I'm at but you can see how it really can bring out those colors I mean look where we are already just that fast it's like turning on a light switch and that's why I like to use that it's um, you got to be careful because you can blow out colors and again that's why I've got my opacity and flow so low but I can also turn it down and just keep some of it you know keep a little bit or I can keep a little bit more of it you know and um, that's basically it I mean that's um, enhance the, that hand a little bit there maybe a little bit on the highlight of the tail there Yeah, I can I can go in and I can blow it out just in this area right here and just keep going over it. Um, or rather than doing that, what I usually like to do is go back in and put highlights in there on top of that. So I'll just go back in with like a white or nearly white uh, color and. And then I'll turn my opacity and flow back up and then I'll just selectively decide where the highlights go All right so maybe there's something on this spherical head I don't want to go too bold but I think he he can have some highlight there and on that maybe there's a little rim lighting on that one you get the picture right so anyway that is basically it and again I'll look at it a little bit more and, and probably do a little more cleanup work but, but that's basic me basically my little Hellboy Again, thanks for watching, and uh, if you want to know more about this technique, you can always check us out on uh, svslearn.com. And uh, anyway, thanks for watching.